Hello, everyone. This is Jay Dobbins, your host of the Marvel DC Universe Fan Club, and I'll be discussing one topic, which is uh, the most, uh, the six most plausible Avengers Infinity War fan theories we've seen. So, uh, spoilers, of course. So, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the Avengers Infinity War movie, I strongly suggest you don't listen to this podcast. Well, sorry, not podcast. This episode, rather. We listed a podcast, but this is not this episode. So, you've been warned. So, um, we've been obsessing over the ending of Avengers Infinity War for days now. Um, trying to understand just... Uh, what that shocking outcome could mean. So, uh, so, um, like, how in the world do they come back from the this bleakest of defeats for Avengers Four? So we're looking at something like this, pretty much, uh, where, uh. Of course, you know, coming me already coming up with theories for Avengers Four. So, yeah, um, they are uh, so that, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of other people coming out of the film obsessed too. So, fans are all over it um, with their own theories of what happened in Infinity War. And what me what it means for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So and um, let's see. And of course, we have complied. Uh, sorry, and we sorry not complied. We comp uh, compiled. Sorry, some of the more believable Avengers fan theories we've heard so far. So it could be a combination of. Some of the um, some well some of all that turn out to be true. So, or maybe none of them. But that's the fun of this franchise in the first place. So, of course, it hardly uh, needs to be said again. Of course, but Avengers: Infinity War spoilers ahead in case you have not seen the movie. But you shouldn't be listening to this podcast. I'm sorry, you shouldn't be listening to this episode anyway if you have not seen the Avengers Infinity War film, so you have been warned earlier, so I'm just letting you know. Or or I'm just reminding those who have heard this before who have not listened to the film, so don't get mad, you know, if I'm telling you about the movie or whatever, because I did tell you not to listen to pot, uh, this episode, so. Anyway, back back to the topic. Um, so the first plausible, uh, most plausible Avengers Infinity War theory would be uh, Strange saw this coming. So, um, so we're, you know, you know, well, yeah, uh, close to the end of an Infinity War, Doctor Strange uses the Eye of Agamotto, a.k.a. the Time Infinity Stone, to look into the future of all the possible outcomes of their battle with Thanos. So he sees 14 million scenarios, but only one in which they win. Uh, so shortly after Strange does a couple of well, strange things. First, he doesn't stop Peter Quill from losing it after, uh, well, of course, out of grief over um, Gamora's death, uh, which then screws up their plan to subdue Thanos and steal the Infinity Gauntlet. So, and then, despite having uh, earlier said he would never give up the Time Stone, even if it meant any everyone dying. He turns it over to Thanos to have to, I mean, to save Tony Stark's life. So this allows Thanos to head to Earth and well to get the final Infinity Stone, then snap his fingers and wipe out half of all life in the universe. Whoops. But you know, as I said earlier before watch before watching the film, I was like, you know, it's only half the universe. I mean, how bad that how bad could that be? You know, but uh. Turns out, Earth was part of that half of the universe, so I was like, eh. But, uh, so frankly, uh, 
So frankly, Tony, well, Tony, and frankly, the whole audience wants to know why Strange did that, of course. Uh, just as Strange started to fade into dust, he tells uh, Tony, he said, and I quote, this was the only way. In other words, it looks uh, like out of the 14 plus, out of the 14 plus million scenarios he saw, the one in which the Avengers uh, win requires Strange to tone over the stone. All Thanos, I mean, sorry, allowing Thanos to kill half of the universe and probably save, you know, Tony's life. So that's that first plausible moment. Um, and then the second one is everyone who disappeared is just trapped in the soul stone. So that's another theory. Um, so this one is, well, this one is one of our favorites. Infinity War fan theories. So, uh, so what exactly is the Soul Stone? Um, it's not entirely clear, but uh, it appears to connected to is, it appears to be connected to the afterlife in some way. Uh, the Marvel Comics equivalent of the Soul Stone, called you know also called the Soul Gem, actually uh, houses an idyllic pocket dimension, uh, the Soul World where the souls of people associated with those uh, who control the soul gem uh, live after their bodies are destroyed. Uh, they aren't dead, exactly, since they technically haven't uh, progressed to the actual afterlife. Uh, so you can guess where this is going in. Uh, in Infinity War, uh, after Thanos snaps his fingers, um, he appears in some kind of spiritual realm where, uh, and we're pretty sure this is uh, totally different from the quantum realm uh, that will, you know, that will be explained in more detail in Ant-Man and the Wasp and encounters Gamora as a child. If the Soul Stone works uh, like it does in the comics, then this probably wasn't Thanos having a comforting vision, but him talking to the spirit to the actual soul of the recently deceased Guardians of, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so, which means uh, perhaps everyone who disappeared isn't literally dead, but their souls are trapped and confined to this realm. A um, confess, sorry, a confession. This theory is also. In our list of the wildest Infinity War fan theories, it falls into the school of, well, crazy. Uh, you know, it just might work. But anyway, um, the school, yeah, the school of, you know, crazy. And it just might work. Yeah. But yeah, my theory is that they are trapped inside the soul realm. A pocketed universe inside the Soul Stone. Um, not dead, but their physical their physical bodies are erased from this realm. Uh, Avengers Four is rumored to be a big time uh, travel movie, so it's up in the air pretty much. Um, but yeah, uh, so theory theory number three is. Uh, the Avengers travel back into time to battle. Uh, well, the Avengers travel back in time to the Battle of New York. This Avengers fan theory has actual evidence to back it up. Some paparazzi uh, set photos revealed Captain America, Tony Stark, Thor, Loki, um, Thor and Loki, all back in uniforms they wore in the original Avengers. But they can also be seen with Ant-Man wearing um, matching watch uh, doohickey looking things or whatever. So, um, well, sure, it does look like they traveled through time, you know, to time to the Battle of New York and Ant-Man factors into Avengers 4. Um, 
in a big way after being MIA during Infinity War. Why? Um, like, because the Avengers uh, was where Thanos first meddled in the affairs of humanity. Um, people, oh, sorry, maybe the plan is to take him out uh, at the start of the quest for the Infinity Stones. So, but anyway, um, so it's, well, so this, so the current theory is that the remaining Infinity War uh, survivors went back in time to the events in the Avengers 2012 to warn and take uh, preemptive action against Thanos. Can't wait. My theory is that the team goes back to this to this battle because they know this is when Thanos began to uh, began his plot to destroy them. Uh, so instead of only Iron Man flying into the portal, they find a way to all go, and they uh, take the battle to Thanos before he's preparing for it. So, uh, remember, Thanos' whole plan was to get the Space Stone, a.k.a. the Tesseract, with Loki's help. Uh, which is why Loki used it to create a wormhole in the space uh, above New York. So, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Thanos tries to bring back Gamora. Um, that's the, this, I think this is the fourth one. Um, yeah, the fourth theory. So, now I'm done with the third theory. But the fourth theory is Thanos tries to bring back Gamora. Um, when Thanos sees the young Gamora in his vision, she asks him what he, what he, uh, had to give up to achieve this. Everything, he replies. Maybe he does care. And, uh, given his newfound invincibility, uh, he may attempt to use the Time Stone to revive Gamora. Though, that could end badly for him if it means the Avengers can take advantage of the time travel. So, uh, for the next... Um, Avengers movie. What if Thanos used the Time Stone to go back to and you know to get uh, Gamora and eventually brings back the Avengers and they kick you know and they you know pretty much beat them and that's why Strange gave it to him because he saw what he do. So um. Now that's that's the end of this that theory. Now next theory is uh, theory number five, which is this uh, the shot from a trailer that wasn't a misdirect at all. So uh, this is a little less plausible, but still fun. Um, check out um, a shot from the Avengers. Uh, sorry, a shot from the trailer in a tweet, but in a tweet on Twitter for one thing. We clearly see the Hulk running um, in the scene with, well, in a scene actually included in Infinity War, but, you know, it's actually Bruce Banner in, uh, in Tony Stark's Hulkbuster suit instead. I'm like, wow, I couldn't believe they, you know, cut that scene from the movie. So, but anyway, um, so, okay, um, I have. I have an Avengers 4 theory, and, of course, it's, uh, you know what, forget it. But anyway, um, now, likely, the shot is either clever marketing, of course, so we're pretty sure they're deliberately, you know, I'm pretty sure they deliberately change a few tiny details to avoid spoilers, or simply, or simply, Footage that ultimately didn't make 
in into the film. So, though we think um, we know where things are going with the Hulk, but that, um, but what if the theory is right? But, um, well, you know, if we buy that time travel factor into the sequel in some way, then uh, then this shot or the shot may have actually existed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but showing up in Avengers 4 instead. I don't know. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, that concludes that theory. Now, the, the final theory is a soul for a soul. Um, this would be the heaviest of outcomes, but makes sense. And we elaborate on it here. Captain America mentions several times in the film, we don't trade lives. And so much of Infinity War is about sacrifice and the consequences of our choices. Um, but he and the other Avengers may have to pay the ultimate price trading their souls and lives for those of the next generation of heroes. Um, the post credit sequence pays heavily homage to leftovers or left behind, and while Marvel isn't likely to go as dark as those uh, movies, that path for Avengers 4 seems to jail with those uh, themes. So, um... It makes, well, it makes even more sense considering that on the business end of things, uh, the contracts for the major Avengers are all up after the fourth movie. So, this would be the heaviest of outcomes, but it makes sense. And we elaborate on it here. So, Captain America mentioned several times in the film uh, that we don't trade lives and much of Infinity War is about sacrifice and consequences of our you know, choice. You know what, now I, I don't know why I'm repeating the same thing. Uh, yeah, sorry. But yeah, um, but yeah, the phrase we don't trade lies kept getting used and the people that faded were newer members in front of loved ones in the original state. Um, I kept thinking that in Avengers 4, there's going to be trade-offs of some lives for others, you know, a soul or a soul. I don't know. Like I said, these are just theories, so I'm just going on record on that one. But uh, that concludes this episode. Feel free to visit us and like us on Facebook. We are available on iTunes and the Google Play Music app. And, of course, YouTube.